What are the biggest mistakes that some of these brands, small and large, are making in the industry right now? Great question. I think without going into the rabbit hole of necessarily design, let's take a step back and look at process because I think understanding the process first and foremost will help reveal the obvious design faux pas. You're listening to Cultivate, a podcast about the people and technology that are blazing a trail in the cannabis industry. Live, day two at Lemon Haze, we've got Cultivate, Lance stepping in for Drew. Thank you again. Yeah, not a problem. Today, we've got Jared Mursky, the CEO of Wick and Mortar with us. Thank you for being here, Jared. Thanks for having me. In just a quick summary, can you tell us what Wick and Mortar is and what you do in the cannabis industry? Yeah, Wick and Mortar uh, is a hybrid creative agency. We create branding, um, digital marketing strategies. Uh, we handle sourcing as far as packaging is concerned, packaging design, web development, app development, um, social media content management. I mean, really the whole nine. Uh, it's been a long run, and we've been, you know, well, I, I'm. I started the company in 2009, so during the inception of the cannabis industry is when we started. through a rebrand. It's been about a year now, right? A year, about, yeah, a little Dude, over a year. By, so this dog years in this industry I know, right? flies by. But you went through this rebrand, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't need to, don't mean to do the plug, but you guys actually I did a short, did a documentary on, and I watched yep. a clip when you guys were sitting around in that think tank brainstorming the new name and the way that you guys and the team, you got a great team. I mean, we, we do too, but it's where our companies have in common. But it was so clutch. I mean, you guys were all like Wick and more and how you came to it. And I'm like, oh, that's gonna be the name. Like it was totally obvious. Like it made so much sense, dude. So you've been through a lot, been around for a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this transition into the new brand, it's on fire, right? Yeah, so, you know, we did it because, you know, I mean, even though we were one of, well, we were the first, you know, branding agency to approach the industry, um, well, before it was really much of an industry, I guess you yeah. could say, you know, we had to call ourselves something as obvious as online marijuana design because there were no ancillary yeah. businesses catering themselves to the cannabis industry. And so ultimately we had to have a name that stood out as something as obvious as that, but also... Google's algorithm at the That's time, you know, yeah, they us both, us real well based on search guys. queries. Yeah, yeah. so yep. um, keywords for the win. But right. So to. online marijuana design that was our name. You know, it wasn't creative, but it, it got the job done. And so OMD. you know that that then transitioned into OMD agency, yeah. which was a lot more mature. Um, but we still felt like we didn't have much of um, much of a personality and. Given the fact that we were a branding agency with a name, with marijuana in our name, uh, pot leaf in our logo, and green in our branding, and here we were, an agent, creative agency telling everyone not to do that. Right. Kind of it played out to, by now, right? Yeah, so, you know, but, you know, this just goes to show that no matter how great you think you are, other brands that come into play can also and ultimately dilute your brand yeah. simply by being the same. Because everyone's coming into this thinking that they should call themselves Canada this or Canada that, when in fact it's almost ridiculous. How many? It's like ev all the, every all the yeah. colors are the green, and it's like do something different. And, it, and I, I think it's rubbed off on the mainstream. And I don't. So so that's why I think Jared, you and I connected. We've known each other for years now. But my background being digital media and marketing, it's interesting because this year's Pantone for 2018 is green. And I really think our industry had an influence on that. I really do. Because you're right, so much green, so much, even terms like the territory, apothecary, like how many apotha, apotha, how many, you, can't keep you know, track. organic. I mean, we have so many customers yeah. with that in their name. Yeah. When you look them up uh, between that and system, Canada. it pulls up 25 and it's like, wait, which one is, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's tough. you have to ask yourself, what do you look for when creating a name for your company? I mean, what we really wanted to ensure we were able to cultivate with the name we created was that we'd been around for a long time. We wanted the name to feel timeless. And when you think of the word brick and mortar, it's a word and phrase rather used so to describe something built from the ground up. And since we are a creative agency and we build brands, we are establishing the foundation for these companies. Yeah. Yeah. Brick by brick, we are helping them build their company from the yeah. ground up. And the mortar is the glue that holds these things together. And so- It's really clever. Wick and mortar, you know, it's yeah, ethereal it's awesome. too. It burns. Yeah. It's also a nod to the cannabis yeah. industry. Yeah. So we thought so it worked well. You guys, I love it, because you did start out with a core focus on marketing. Obviously, that's a great introduction to the relationship. And then you all quickly realize, and a lot of people don't know this, right? That advertising is a component within marketing. 
but you all started going that direction too because that's a great great way to not just cultivate but retain that relationship what what challenges and i know you make it all look easy because you're like you're all over social media you're i mean you've been a bit of a, a personality in the industry and yourself as a brand in the company but still it comes back to facebook and instagram obviously instagram owned by facebook Google and YouTube, YouTube owned by Google, so similar. Yeah. Where are the challenges there? Do you guys have to get creative with what you're putting out as far as content to, to keep the you know the bots happy, so to speak, well, as we say? You know, first I have to say that most creative agencies don't try and position themselves as life as lifestyle brands. Yeah. You know, as a creative agency, we wanted to show what our personalities were like, primarily because we have so much fun doing what we do that we felt like we should share the same experience we have working on the brands we create for our clients is the same experience they would like to have when they build the brand themselves. But because they don't know how to do it, they want to work with an agency, so why not make that process fun? Because honestly, that is the most fun part of building a brand. Yeah. Um, so, you know, looking at how we first satisfy the client, right, is paramount. That's what you get. You probably get a lot of people that come back and you go, man, you, you put my brand on point, everything's spot on. Now, how do I, because that's the way I used to describe it. I'd be like, okay, you getting your, your business together, off the ground and everything, it's like you're getting ready to throw a sick party, right? You got yep. top shelf alcohol or top, chef flour, top shelf flour, whatever it is. You still need to send out invites. You yep. still need to let people know where you are. And that's especially when it's in digital media. I'd be like, okay, we built this sick site. And they're like, cool, all the traffic's going to come. I'm going to turn it into this no. juggernaut in the no. world of, <laughs> of click and mortar, as we used to say, right? If you build it, they won't come. No, they yeah. don't come because I'm like, you, you have an island. So imagine you're Hawaii and there, there's no planes, there's no ships, there's no nothing. That, that's the advertising that has to come in. So I think that's what you're getting. It's like that you guys, okay, yeah, now we built this for you and they will come right. because you're gonna have us help you there too. Right? Yeah, I mean, from a social perspective, I mean, you really, really have to get granular with respect to how you approach the people you're tar trying to market. When I began my uh, you know, exploration of LinkedIn, because um, I would say LinkedIn has been uh, a platform that I've been able to dedicate a portion of my success to. Oh, yeah. Primarily because I've just been able to tap into a really good market. But essentially what I started doing was requesting relationships through um, LinkedIn that were, uh, you know, creative directors and other agency owners because I felt like the work we were doing would be something that they would be interested in engaging with. They're not doing that stuff, and a lot of them aren't. So I have friends and family in, uh, you know, the large agency, you know, traditional agency world over there in, in yeah. good old New York. And so, you know, I kind of tapped into some of their connections and and really started to explore. And before I knew it, I had a lot of people with their eyes on, you know, OMD. And yeah, then we sure. went through the rebrand and we documented it. And then people were really inspired by the process of the process we took because Honestly, not a lot of agencies are as transparent as I think we are about our process. We don't think that our process is necessarily the secret sauce. We think that that it only conveys that we are a cannabis company that's focused on cannabis, rather that has their shit together. Yeah. And that's what peop that's what brands in the industry need to see when working with Especially new companies as in it the matures. Space or, yeah. I mean, you get these these companies in Canada that are these high-level CEOs and very they buttoned up. Yeah. Yeah. And you have some news on that too in Canada, don't yeah, that's, you? That's that's I have to share because I'm so excited about it. Because Jared and I always catch up all the shows, and we were down at CSC. We were at the uh, Cannabis Science Conference down in Portland. Got to hang out with Fran Drescher. Great yep, video. Yep. And and I have to say, man, you shared it, and I was so stoked because having been a former business owner myself, a few companies like this is pivotal for you, man. You picked up Aurora, which we are good friends. We love that LP. We love a lot of the LPs we work with, but Aurora. Man, there's something about that company. So when I heard you picked up, tell us about that, man. That is a huge win. You know, um, I actually, I love, I love everything about them as far as, uh, you know, my experience working with them. Yep. Um, you know, Tracy and Marcel, uh, they've been excellent to work with. They're so down to earth. You know, you'd think that with a company of that size and corporate structure, they'd yeah. be a bit stuffy, but... So, so not Canadians. at all. Oh, they're, oh, they're amazing. They've beauty, all got a beauty, hundred well, percent. Yeah, they've got again. They're a good representation of um, a, uh, a a brand with life. You know, you can't have a lifestyle, but they definitely are a brand with life. You know, um, no, it's been great working with them. We've been we've been really really focused on building out a uh, 
sales training manual. It's been, this has been a huge project, uh, but I'm super stoked. I mean, they love it, we love yeah. it. It's, it's a work of art. It's and awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, I yeah. appreciate that. Serious, man. Because they are not, and that's the thing, I don't think people continue on Canada. That's that's a territory that Scott has to focus on. They, the, it's world domination. Like it's a game of it's a game of monopoly, and they own all Park Place all the way to Pasco. I mean, they are definitely dominant. So I think it's cool because yeah, Aurora is a lot of people think Canada, think of a Canadian LP. But man, they're they're at the shows with us down in the states, right? I mean, they're they're and I, everywhere. And I yeah. know they're in Europe. I know I like I'm keeping track of all the LPs in every continent I run into them on. Yeah. And they seem like a company is doing it right. So they're smart to, well, to and pick I, you it. Know, I think that's so, been so. our focus is really working with just public companies and companies going public. You know, we've, we're have we working with uh, Covalent, uh, formerly known as Doyen Elements. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, fingers crossed, but we're talking to GTI about working with a, uh, a brand uh, and helping them rebrand, actually, uh, yep. a company they just recently acquired. Nice. Um, so, and then, you know, we're working with uh, PacX, uh, which, you, yep. yeah, we know PacX. Yep. Yep. Chris, amazing, amazing individual. Yep. Uh, their team is just phenomenal. So we're helping them actually uh, develop a, docu- uh, a, a little 15-minute uh, documentary on, uh, you know, paying homage to Humboldt and what's to be the Appalachians of Humboldt and yeah, yeah. Sure. the culture and the microclimates and the dry... Um, uh, you know the dry growing and uh, cultivation and uh, just really everything that makes them unique. In fact, many people, as I'm sure you know, consider potency the best way to price cannabis, which we all know is not the way yeah. to do it. Can't wait till we get past that. Yeah. Can't and wait till we get then, past course, the adolescence well, phase. And here. then you know everyone just assumes that indoor grown cannabis is always going to be superior to that yeah. of outdoor. Indoor light depth, and you hit, and and I think. I think it's safe to say that you're a bit of a purist. I mean, I, I, I deem myself a connoisseur. I have such a large respect for outdoor, you know, not to get on a tangent, but you know, I mean, you get past the genotype into the phenotype that Anika, you mentioned it, like the marine layer, these micro environments that make the triangle so special. Right? Well, they grow their vegetables yeah. alongside. Companion crops, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's a big thing. I have friends that they plant clover leaves between their rows because from a, a phytoremediation of moisture. It's something that just helped keep moisture in the ground. Keep yeah. the, I mean, it's just, it's so That's crazy. That's a really interesting fact. We just named a company Clover. Really? I shit you not. <laughs> so <laughs> I, w- I will, I would, I would love for you to share that with, uh, my creative der- uh, director Derek uh, yeah. at the end because that's, that's a, a really stuff. interesting fact. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, you learn something there's, there's yeah. some every day. day. Companion plants and others. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some are traditionalists. They do things like roses on the on the front of their crop, like the wineries and such. Do yeah, oh, yeah. there's all different types of traditions. But now you can tell it's what I miss living in SoCal compared to growing up in NorCal. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, it's just. What are some uh, challenges you see brands or companies facing in terms of advertising and marketing? as it gets more regulated, the whole market, or the whole industry as a whole? Well, everyone has their own interpretations of what they think packaging rules are. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, there are a lot of designers that don't do their due diligence, and so the cultivator relies on the designer to provide them with what they think is the best packaging solution, yeah. when in fact, it's not always the best possible, yeah. possibly harmful for the environment, um, and I mean, more importantly, it's not legal, yeah. right? So uh, it's a big one, right? Yeah. That's it's a, kind it's of that, important. That's what's great. Some some people lead with with the requisite and the regulations, right, around their packaging, and others lead with the passion of design and the creative elements of marketing. Well, you know, right? so I, when I'm when I'm vetting a, a potential client or a relationship, you know, one of the first questions I ask them is if they've ever worked with a creative agency before, because it is significantly different than working with a designer. Yeah, designer or consultant in general, or consultant, because right? designers solve what kind of problems? Designer problems, but design, but a branding agency solves business problems through design. Yeah, right, and storytelling. Yeah, and so um, a lot of the a lot of the you know uh, potential clients that we work with often become rebrands because when they come to us, they think they've done it right or have a good start. Yeah. And then I tell them our process and like, oh shit, <laughs> I had no idea that was even part of it. They didn't know that there was a part where you go through and you build the personality of your company, right? Yeah. 
who would have thought that was a product? That doesn't come when you create the name? No, you do the personality before you, you do the name. It makes it easier to come up with a name, right? It's, yeah. There's just a formula. Yeah. Crazy. So that's, and that's a good way of putting it. You do kind of to a certain uh, level breathe life into it. And I think some of the stuff you do, it's shown. Like it definitely has shown that, you, and the way you launch it too, I think that's, and to your point, again, we're both on LinkedIn all the time, but that's what I love about following you is you're like, hey, what do you guys think? Like this is something we're working on. This is a brand we're getting ready to launch but would like a little input from, from my peers. I think it's awesome because a lot of companies want to keep that under wrap. Some of these bigger guys are rep companies like Coca-Cola and Apple and stuff. They like keeping it so secretive and they're so confident that what they're going to put out is going to kill it. Yet, you're kind of humble in that way, right? You're kind yeah. of modest and like, let's get a little feedback. Let's test the waters. Yeah, I like that. And I, and I like it because, you know, sometimes clients will also allow us to reveal parts and pieces of the brand as we start to reveal it because they're interested in getting feedback from other high-level creatives. It's almost an added benefit. It's like my survey network, right? Yeah, but from people that come from the traditional space. So it's nice. Um, and I would also say that, uh, you know, another mixture of my, you know, mayhem, which I call LinkedIn, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, is, uh, you know, investors and other cultivators because, I mean, who am I marketing to? Them, yeah. right? Yeah. And of course, distribution companies and yeah. dispensary chains and so forth. But, uh, you know, I would say that that has allowed me to establish engagement is just really understanding who would even be interested in looking at packaging. Yeah. Right. Who wants it, to look at that? It makes sense. Though. Right? I mean, that's I, I worked for a few companies. We talk about this company above it. You know, the, the core and I've told our marketing team, we got a few guys here filming us right now from it. You know, we we are. Marketing is at our core is our company. You know, it's really, it's about our brand being on point. We're even starting to dabble a little into the lifestyle, as you mentioned. Some companies, sales. I worked for a company before this, that the, the, the nuclei of that company was sales, which is fine. But it, it really, it's something about that whole marketing component, component really shapes it and helps people relate to it. We love, I mean, that's why we do something. You, should, you see us, we're at every show. I mean, we love being up because we love getting in touch with the consumer and getting feedback on what yeah. we're doing and how it's working for them. Yeah. So I think that's really cool that you appreciate carry that. that. Into the I appreciate that too, for sure. So I think another thing to look at, and, and we can keep this totally ambiguous because you and I both know, we all know yeah. that there's a few brands that have been doing it very wrong. Uh, just in general, though, what would you say? And I think we kind of touched on this. You talked about leaves everywhere and, and green Pantone, and but. What are the biggest mistakes that some of these brands, small and large, are making in the industry right now? Great question. I think without going into the rabbit hole of necessarily design, let's take a step back and look at process. Because I think understanding the process first and foremost will help reveal the obvious design faux pas, right? So when we approach uh, you know, any client, we start with the creative brief. The creative brief is where we go through a series of in-depth questions tailored to your business that help us better understand and solidify the creative direction moving forward. These very specific questions reveal information and insight that is paramount to uh, the process in terms of how you approach the creative. Yeah. So once we've had the ability to extrapolate that information, we then move into the brand directional mood boards. The brand directional mood boards is where we, well, I think the best way to put this is, let's look at Gillette razors and the Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. Gillette is <laughs> the best a man can get, right? Very masculine, bold, futuristic in their aesthetic approach is where the Dollar Shave Club is witty, comical, yeah. right? Funny. Yeah. And the amount of money they spent to put together their commercial is nominal in comparison to what Gillette has had to spend. Yeah. But nonetheless... Uh, the Dollar Shave Club was very successful. Why? Well, they took a risk. They differentiated themselves completely and so well, in fact, that... Uh, Gillette they, came back, right? They, well, so, in fact, that uh, um, the Dollar Shave Club, uh, you know, grew to become the monster they are today. Yeah. yeah. While competing with Gillette. This behemoth. Right? Which Gillette, to your point, that's, I love that story. I mean, to geek out. But this is one thing I thought was pivotal, and this is when you know a disruptor has made an impact on an industry. So Gillette, there's a lot of companies that kind of monopolize certain niches in certain industries, right? Gillette had owned it for so long, and there was none of that personal. They never talked about their employee. Have you seen their latest campaign? I mean, they literally came out with a marketing campaign that targeted Dollar Shave Club and said, made in America, made by these hardworking individuals from this town. Like, they literally pivoted 
their whole, we're the best, we're number one, we're the only, and by the way, we charge you eight bucks a blade. There was no like personal connection no, uh, for the, the consumer to the They the don't brand touch on the real parts of social responsibility, but yeah. my point of that was that had the Dollar Shave Club came out with a personality that was similar to Gillette, much like Braun, right? Yeah. Um, they would have created more competition for themselves prior to even starting. So they're failing before they start. Yeah. So when you see brands come to market, they're trying to emulate or echo another brand that they saw, when in fact, that's not the right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You need to take a risk, calculated of course, but again, that's why people come to agencies to help provide those creative suggestions and solutions uh, and explorations with supporting rationales to show why you should do this. So once we've solidified on a personality that we've presented, we you know provide them with you know uh, curated images that are designed to make you feel specific emotions alongside personality traits or words like bold or futuristic if we were to use those, but with supporting rationale to reinforce the why behind bold and futuristic because bold to you could mean something different to me. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So we get very definitive, but from there then we go into the naming process. You know we had this client come to us with the name Uncle Mark's Farm. And uh, oh, the story of Uncle Mark is that this, Diane, this gal Diane and her husband Chris went to Uncle Mark, who was growing cannabis in Eastern Washington, and he was growing, uh, uh, you know, medical, you know, essentially medical marijuana. Yeah. And um, he was arrested by the federal government and sent to prison. And in prison, he got sick and died. And so they wanted to br build a brand when cannabis became legal in Oregon and call it Uncle Mark's Farm. But I told him that that was a not a good name yeah. and, and, and it stemmed from the information that they gave me through the creative brief. They said they didn't want it to be masculine. Yeah. Um, they, when I asked them to uh, close their eyes and tell me what they visualized when they said Uncle Mark's Farm, they said a guy in overalls standing in front of a farm. Yeah. So that's pretty masculine. And yeah. then when you look that's at the fact that so many brands in the industry have farm at the end and then a name prior to Uncle Ike's, right? There's just yeah. all of these uncles, yeah. Mark's, they're, they're very same, same, right? Yeah. So we explain to them the faux pas and the situations that could arise if we decided to take this route. Yeah. So they gave us the ability to change their name. The yeah. name we chose was Rebel Spirit. The reason very why Rebel clever. Spirit yeah, worked in a number clever. of ways is because unlike Uncle Mark's Farm, we were no longer hindered by our ability to expand on the brand's visual language, right? With Rebel Spirit, when you look at and think of the name, their Uncle Mark is a rebel and his spirit will live on through the brand, but more importantly, each and every consumer and patient purchases cannabis illegally on a federal level. Yeah, nice. Thus, Uncle Mark lives vicariously through all of us because we can purchase that and get away that's with a, it. That's, that's deep, sweet. that's so clever. Yeah. I mean, that's like talking about like the FAVs, the, the features, advantages, benefits. Some people focus so much on features of something, they don't discuss the advantages and benefits. Very similar though, you were talking about like, yeah, we can still pay that homage, but, but we can, do it in a different way. Like, because that's the first thing I picture. I'm like, it'd be okay to have a, a guy stand in front of a farm, or almost, I would think almost like a silhouette of him in front of a farm or a sunset in the background because of it being Spokane or Eastern Washington. But to your point, some it's a little more general. That totally meant like, obviously you're good at what you do, man. This this all I makes sense. That. <laughs> this all makes yeah, sense. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to remain a little vague and have a bit of mystery. Yeah, yeah. And not always be so obvious. Again, online marijuana design, that's about yeah. as literal as it gets. Yeah. Again, we rebranded because if you look at the landscape of brands in the industry today, they're all most of them are gonna need a rebrand. If you if yeah. a lot of you growers out there are wondering why you're starting to see sales drop, it's because when you started, you were all branded equally as terrible. Yeah. Well, and we now, used to now be, there's good brands coming to market, and yeah. so those are starting to create what's called brand loyalty. Bit of a disruption there, huh? And so now now you're seeing the shift. Yeah. And now you're there's the the brown the uh, brand bouncing is starting to happen less and less and less. Yeah. yeah. And so Bovida, before it was Bovida, it was Humidipack. I mean, it's like, it, it, literally, it, that's exactly what our packets are. It's a Humidipack. Yeah. Just and, simple white and blue packs. And everyone, you know? people are coming out with knockoffs, like Humipuck, Humidus. And it's like, we need to like differentiate ourselves yeah. from everyone else because we have a patented technology that no one else can make. And then that's where you get Bovida, which is a Spanish word for vault. Mm -hmm. So it's like Humipack. What was it Humipack you said? Humidipack. Humidipack, Humidipack yeah. would be like the name of the product, and then Boveda is the name of the company, right? Yeah. You can, you know, that yeah. would have been actually kind of a cool name yeah. to coin for that. And then you yeah. can, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure, yeah, come cool. sure. But anyways, cool stuff. Um, well, what do you think about man? There's, there's so much again. You're, you're out there on the scene. Yeah. You get it. You see it. 
the future of cannabis, like in general? I know that's, it's a very it's vague a, it's and a hard question. question. Yeah, we like to but ask so, everyone though that comes yeah, on that just question. Like, what do you see in the future? I mean, keep in mind, obviously, the first G7 country to to come online, that being Canada, and some of the things they have up their sleeves. And you know, you know we're know. working with a company right now uh, called Melix, which is really cool because um, what we're doing is uh, we have. The, DNA test kits that will um, test your, uh, your well your DNA to tell you what terpene profiles work best with your genetic makeup or markers rather. I think I've heard a little bit about this. Wow. Yeah, so they're yeah. called Neelix GX. Yeah. Yep. And that's cool, right? Because that's next level stuff. I mean, again, we a lot of us are kind of regulars. We talk about it all the time. Like uh, one of the things I always bring up, like stop asking me indica or sativa. There, it's not even. I mean, 80, 90% of what out there is a hybrid. Ask me what my favorite terpene is. Ask me what my favorite profile between THC, CBD, and CBN or CBG is. Yeah. Like, let, let's take it to the next level because we need to. I mean, and we all lead with education. You're like me. Like, I've, I've seen people walk up to you and, and you lead the conversation with education. Scott does it. I do it. And I'm just hoping that we get there. But, man, sky's the limit, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you talk about education and that's, that's really why, uh, you know, uh, well, mutual friend of ours, JJ Walker. Yep. Uh, Cannabition, Cannabis Museum in Las Vegas. Right there on the strip. One of the only cannas, I will admit, that I had no problem branding because in this instance, it actually makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, no, but a great place to get informed and educated. So if you're in Las Vegas, <laughs> and go you to downtown see- Las Vegas in the Fremont District and you will yeah. find Cannabition. It is awesome. And that's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I remember another friend of ours, uh, Jerome Baker. Yep. I think that's the world's Jason biggest Harris, bomb. yep. Right? Yep. Jason yeah. Harris, a.k.a. Jerome Baker. Yep. Glass, yep. Uh, blue uh, Bongzilla, 24-foot bong. Yeah. Shout out to Jason. Yeah, man. And he's got, I love his, you, you've been to his, uh, his place shop, in the art yeah. district. His shop is dope. Well, is yeah, the bomb he, um, that's over here? Is no, that that this, is a, this is a, relatively speaking, a small one. Okay. <laughs> his collection. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and he actually blew... Um, the uh, he blew up uh, wick and mortar pipe for us actually. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, he did, I mean his he beautiful beautiful work that he does. I'm a huge yeah, fan. I'm sure we'll be we'll be by over there during. MJ yeah, Biz actually, I'm having him come down for Pacific Expediters uh, um, Emerald Cup because they're sponsoring the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, and um, I have I have uh, Jason flying down with some of his bongs. Wow. So he's nice. signing uh, autographing uh, covers of Dope Magazine. That'd That'd be that's sick. It's cool. This has been another live episode of Cultivate here at Lemon Haze. You got Jared here with Wick and Mortar. Thank you for being on the show. If you need to rebrand or you're looking for some help in advertising, hit them up. <laughs>